Welcome to the Wide World of Esports, a show devoted to all things esports. I'm co-host Catherine Knorr, and hosting with me today is shoutcaster Robert Artie Ross. Hi, Artie. Hey, Catherine. Our topic today is esports is hiring, how to get a job in the esports industry. And our guest is Uzair Hassan, the author of the Esports Career Guide, How to Get a Job in the Esports Industry. Uzair, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. I'm so excited to share what I wrote in this book and hopefully help some people understand how to better get a job in the esports industry. So Uzair, what inspired you to write this book? That is a hot question. So I, my esport journey started in 2017. So about four years from the time I was able to land a full-time position. And at that point as well, I got multiple contracts. So B2B, I worked with people um, from the grassroots side, business owners, I'm in municipal governments. I even got reached out to by a Hollywood uh, director who was getting into the esport industry. So I, I, I experienced a lot, but it was very hard to get to that point from A to Z. I had no idea what I was doing. I made so many different mistakes. And what's worse is I went to the first ever post-secondary esport business program at Lambton College, the esports entrepreneurship and administration program. And unfortunately, obviously, the first cohort to graduate graduated in COVID. But unfortunately, majority of the people that are leaving that aren't leaving with a job. Um, and it's very sad. I know a lot of my colleagues as well that are just going back to college for something completely different. And I, after retrospecting and intro introspecting on what I might have done differently, that allowed me not, not only to get a bunch of contracts, but also a full time position at Canada's number one esport organization. Um, so like after looking at that, I realized there's some things I did really right that other people missed to do. And I really wanted to prevent that from other people in the past. But not only that, I was also very stressed out during my four years, unsure if can I get a job? Is this even possible? Am I like crazy? Am I messing up my life? Um, and I wish four years in the past, I had some, something with, from someone who says, you know, you can do it. It's very possible. Because the first thing I ever heard about in terms of getting a job in esports was a Reddit post that said, Anyone that's trying to get a job, specifically it was relating to the, um, the program because it was a Reddit post saying, is this program even viable? People were saying, that if anyone that signs up to this program is just lost, they have no idea what they're doing. This is not possible. You can't get into esports unless you're a player. Um, and that really caused me issues where I wish someone told me, you can do it. In fact, this is what you should be doing. This is what you should be focusing on. So that's exactly why I put this book together. That's really awesome. I mean, like I was in those shoes exactly just a couple of years ago. So I want to just extend that if, if I, so going back, right. A couple of years ago, I'm a student. I have no idea what I'm doing. I have no experience. What would you advise me to do since you've gone through this process already? What would you start with in that process? Yeah. So I think the most important part is to actually gain some perspective in terms of what the industry is, what opportunities are there and what you're really getting yourself into. So the way I even structured the book is that we start off with section one, which I called the tutorial because I, I framed the getting a job in the esport industry like a game because a, lo a lot of pieces very much are like a game and you're playing it as such. But you start off with understanding the high level on, like, perspective of what you're getting yourself into, the problems with esports. In fact, that's the first chapter, why you shouldn't want to go into the esport industry. I list out five reasons to run from the industry. And then we transition into speaking about okay, now that we know the problems, what does it take to actually get a job? And I also speak to the types of jobs that are in the uh, industry. We speak about the different pathways and, the, and then we talk about the mentality and some of the base information you need to have. And then from there, we, we go to the second section, which kind of outlines, this is what you initially need to be doing to start building up uh, your level in terms of your perceived value and actual value. I actually break that up into the book and we can obviously get into more of why that is and how to kind of do it. But then once you understand the high level it's just about going in the, the um you know field and starting to do some work building your relationships and uh taking those steps forward and i outlined the very specific ways you do that um in the book you know one of the most fundamental questions that we have and this this is why the the uh, it was called is esports hiring is are there jobs in the industry yeah there there are there's a ton of jobs without a doubt. The industry is growing rapidly. There's a, so much investor money coming in. It's so much so that there's an alleged bubble. Um, obviously, that is one of the reasons to run esports is kind of unstable, struggling with profitability. But nevertheless, there are so many jobs with the massive growth, massive opportunities. This is the future. There's no doubt. It's, it's always a concern of um, if it's now. 
but like if you look at the hit marker 2019 report super popular report showing that about 89 percent uh there was an 89 percent increase in total jobs it was a near double of the industry between 2018 and 2019. i also break down that report in my book where i also mentioned there are some caveats or some key issues with that data that i kind of broke down that people need to be aware of so it's not that extreme to a jump, I would say, I don't think the industry literally doubled in that year alone, but there's clearly a massive growth in jobs and it's not going to stop anytime soon. I agree. There's really a trend upward these days, uh, not only with esports organizations, but also with all of the other aspects in uh, from the game side of things to the service side of things, all the way going forward into, you know, tournament organizations and just all of these different levels. Does your book focus on any of these specific points or does it cover pretty much everything, uh, all the ins and outs of the industry? Yeah, so my, my biggest focus with the book is to help someone get into the back end of the esports industry. And that is really coming down to see, one of the struggles with the book. And I mentioned this in the book as well, is that esports is an industry, not a career in the sense that there's so much uh, different avenues you can go down. So one of the issues when constructing this book is how do I create information that can help people on a uh, wide scale? So any, anywhere on the esport industry without actually getting into the specifics of building out um, what I would refer to as your ancestry, which is your skill set uh, within the book. And um, so what we, we do is I, I really touch in a high level how you should be developing and how you determine what to develop. I don't unfortunately tell you the specifics, but then we go from the entire pathway you in the book there's an exercise to help you determine what it is you need to do uh to build up an experience and like there's a very strategic strategy that i think more people need to employ which is actually looking at the job postings looking at what companies are actually looking for actually calling up companies reaching out saying what are our and people that are working in these fields understanding what they do doing those in grassroots organizations specifically to tackle like a car technique which is very common in um interviews where they actually want you to write a story of how you've done something within an actual job. And then you also go into the specifics of how to land a job because there's multiple ways beyond just applying on a job board. You know, the esports ecosystem is so big and we have some examples of that right here. I am an attorney and mediator. And of course, um, Artie is a shout caster and does a number of other things. And then, of course, you own Esports Pow as well, Uzair. So do you talk about the ecosystem uh, in your book? Yeah, so we go through the ecosystem in a high level. In Chapter 5, which is the end of Section 1, which is the overview, I, I highly recommend people to actually research the industry. In fact, I have an entire website that comes with the book with a ton of resources from my blog, from other books, other podcasts. People need to understand the ecosystem. My book is not the place to understand it. In fact, I recommended like um, the, the book of esports, amazing book. Uh, I have a, a spoken to Williams. He's actually helped me uh, in, in terms of some advice and getting this book out. But like I recommend people to understand the ecosystem. It's super important. Actually, we emphasize the value and the importance that employers are looking for in terms of you understanding the industry and being immersed in the uh, specifics of the industry. But I don't really go into too much depth. We go on a very high level, like I mentioned, the key, key players, the key stakeholders, but we don't actually um, like dive into deep into it. I love that. That's it, I really also like how your book is structured with like kind of it is a game in and of itself. Like you've got all these references to how uh, a video game RPG is kind of like laid out of the ancestry, even like building your character, all that kind of stuff. It's really cool. Your book has a lot of personality. Um, so another question that I have, uh, just kind of regarding your book is, because you also talked about, uh, you know, the book of esports, which I have also given a, a, a read and, you know, you're, you talk about all of these different things, how the esports industry is just so complex. It's so hard to just like dive into specifics in one certain way or the other. So you go from kind of a higher level. What are the parts of your book that focus in and get really, really specific? Is it more on the career side of things? Is it more on the advice side of things? Where does your book really focus in? Yeah, so the book focuses, um, so a large part of the book is focusing on the end goal. So I, I think, uh, within the book, one area that I probably would have liked to beef up a bit, but it would have gone in too long is actually building up your experience going through the grassroots. I do outline specifically how to find opportunities because I've had dozens of calls with people on the grassroots level 
Um, I've never had issues finding grassroots opportunities. For some reason, so many people do. I don't know. Sometimes it's like excuses. Other times they're actually seriously just lacking the understanding of where to go. So I mentioned specifically, this is how you uh, find opportunities. This is how you get into an organization. This is how you make sure you get more responsibilities. And I also tell them at what point do you leave and how should you position yourself? Should you be a leader? And so if so, how do you do that? But the book more so focuses on the end result. So section three is focusing on the six classes and a class in this book is essentially a method of getting into the esport industry. So we have swordsman, which is your traditional way to apply to jobs, which um, newsflash, by the way, for anyone that is focusing primarily on applying through job boards, about 15% of jobs go to people that are applying through online means. That means for one job that goes to someone online, 12 jobs are going through these other methods, um, or 11 rather, sorry, 11 out of 12 jobs are going through these other methods. And um, the second one is summoner which is basically the best way to get into the industry is networking, having relationships. And we, I talk specifically how you provide value to people, make, make someone's day actually come to them as someone hungry to learn and hungry to benefit the other person and actually build a relationship to get a referral. That is the number one way to get a job in the industry. And then I also, the next class is assassin, which is infiltrating an actual company, providing so much value that they they realize that you're going to make them more money than it would cost them to hire you. So it's like a no brainer at that point. And like, we talk about the specific issues of like internships and volunteering, like managing and how to overcome that, how to be in a position where you're providing the employer with so much information week after week, so much value week after week, every meeting you should be coming in with something pre-planned and making sure you provide so much value that lands you a job. And the next three classes to get a job into the sport industry are more so like not in the traditional way of getting a job. The first one is a samurai, which is actually focusing on the gig economy that has been blowing up since 2009, um, where you, you focus on getting contracts, which is how I initially got into esports was working contract after contract, B2B. Um, next one after that is wizard, which is an entrepreneurship part. I don't really go into the entrepreneurship too much in this book, but I talk about what characteristics should an entrepreneur have. And then lastly, we is a berserker class, which is my favorite, which actually got me the contracts and the um, full-time job offer was actually creating content online and providing it to people about the grassroots and business side of esports. You know, we've been focusing very heavily on this issue of your book. And I'm a, uh, I have five um, books uh, that I've offered and I've interviewed about three or four other authors, including William, William Collis, who wrote the book of esports and Justin Jacobson, um, and uh, borrow a win. And I always have an esports book that I'm reading. But a lot of people who are watching this don't really read books. They watch videos, they scroll on the internet. And, and if they're trying to find the answer to something, they're going to look for it on the internet or, or on YouTube rather than buy a book. Tell us why you think it's important for such a deep dive that would lead someone to actually read a book? Yeah, I really appreciate this question because this is the number one complaint I've gotten when I did initial feedback for this book. And even during the process of building it, and even now when I'm reaching out to people, this is the number one complaint I've heard about the book is that people don't read books, um, young, specifically the younger generation. And I think, I think that's a that's a massive disservice to themselves in, in the sense that I only started reading uh, a year ago, a year and a half ago, and it completely changed my life ever since I've read at least 50 plus uh, nonfiction business and personal development books. And it's com like, again, completely changed my life. And I think there's, so, there's a value that sitting with the book, sitting, understanding the thoughts of an author who actually spent so much time building this book out, then refining it. And now the individual who reads it has to invest like, um, like 10, 12, sometimes six or like it's it depends on how fast you read but you spend so much time with the author understanding the content there's I, I i believe there's a profound value in the way we consume books and the way it's composed versus videos in the way they're incentivized to be composed like really quick uh easy to consume and i don't to, to answer your question in terms of why people should be going out and reading a book is because uh, let me ask you is it hard to get a job in esports is this something that ho wakes you up or holds you awake at night like is this something that you seriously want to succeed at and i think the type of people that are, are going to win in this industry because they're looking for people that are go-getters people that work hard that are 
um, be able to adapt to change and have an entrepreneurial mindset that you know, are able to bring innovation to one of the fastest growing industries where you need to be willing to be like, okay, I really want this. There's this book here, probably a great resource. I can either not read the book and maybe make a lot of the same mistakes that the author made because I don't like reading, or I can take a chance, maybe even buy the Kindle, which will be 99 cents. So like, if you're not willing to spend a dollar, even to skim through it and see if the content's worthwhile, I think you're doing a disservice to yourself. Outside of that, I think people are right, um, you know, are allowed to make their own decisions. If they don't want to read the book because they hate reading, that's fine because I hated reading when I was in high school. I hated people that read. So like, I completely um, empathize with that. You took the words right out of my mouth. I really think that it's it's a whole matter of just what you said with, you know, people don't read books anymore. It's a lot of time commitment. It's a lot of hard work to actually, you know, force yourself to sit down and do that. And, you know, the, the kind of people that this book is aimed for are the kind of people that actually will go out and do that and buy the book and sit down and read it. So, I mean, yeah, you you said it way better than I ever could. I guess one of the biggest questions I'm left with so far is just over... Overall, we know that your book talks about getting into the esports industry. It talks about breaking in and what kinds of things you should look for. It talks about exactly what mistakes were made, what mistakes to look out for, what things to actively pursue. So I guess that what I can expect from your book is a, a full-on guide of how to actually not make these mistakes and how to only do the right things. Is that, a, is that the correct assumption I'm getting from what my expectations are? I would, I would add on to that in terms of some things that help you accelerate because there are like what my favorite part of the book and I, I, like I came up with this and it just makes complete sense. And it, and I like there's research to back this up about, I think it's either 56 or 57% of hiring managers are impressed by a candidate that has a website, but only it's either seven or 9%. Um, all my resources are like, like with the book, uh, come with the book. So you can double check me on these numbers, but um it's either seven or nine percent of candidates actually have a job posting, and I, I would believe majority of those are people that are entering um, from like a experience standpoint, like more senior people. Where not like one of the ideas I prescribe is that you need to set up a website and set it up like a sales uh, a landing page. You're selling yourself. You're building and like what what's even cooler about that is that I want you to put testimonials from people that you've worked with. You link their LinkedIn there. You put their photo, and now. You know, when they're looking for referrals, when they're looking to verify that you've done what you've done, you literally put that on the website. And now you've also added pictures in terms of what you've done, your entire timeline. Like it is a amazing strategy. Another um, key element is a video resume. It is so, so powerful, especially in the esport industry, not to communicate what you've done. Your resume will do that just fine. It's to create, uh, communicate how creative you are, the fact that you're willing to go above and beyond and how you make this video look, what you do in the video how you engage in this video is going to be super, super critical and like beneficial. It's not, it's not stuff that you need to do a hundred percent. You can get a job without making a website or a video, but um, th these are some of the elements, not, but by far not the only ones that I've included in the book to help you go above and beyond. That's, that's the biggest thing for me in this book is making sure people, when they're going through this journey is that they're optimizing their opportunities they're optimizing the time they have without wasting too much of it and then making the right decision, but also looking at what we can do to get in front of employers, to get these relationships to actually stand out when you're, because another big thing, just to wrap this answer up is that you have to always think about everything you do to answer the question, why you, there are hundreds of people that are applying to these jobs thousands or thousands of people that are applying to jobs in general, but hundreds of people for a specific job. An employer has to answer the question, why should I consider you over everyone else? You need those key things that are making you stand out. And I think the book really does a good job to make you start thinking about what you can do to stand out and really get a grasp of what the game is. So you understand the parameters that you have to work with in terms of actually um, impressing these employers because employers are just people. You know, um, I think when you're talking about getting a job, anyone can get a job, but whether you can get that dream job or get that job that is your goal is, you know, that's the game changer. But, you know, I don't think that we can talk about the video and the uh, resume and the website without asking the big question. What do you think about LinkedIn and use of LinkedIn in? promoting yourself to prospective employers? Yeah, yeah, that is a great question. So one of the things I prescribe in the book, because 
uh, what a lot of hiring managers do is that once you're in the part where they're vetting um, individuals, they're looking at your social media to see why they shouldn't pick you up. Um, like, well, I was surprised by this, but one of the key things that they're looking at is if your your spelling and grammar is right and the type of things you're engaging with. So the, what I prescribe in the booklet is let, let's turn this around. When they look up your social media, let's not give them a reason why not to pick you up. Let's give you a reason why they should pick you up. You, I, I'm, not, I'm not super big into like flashing so, social status and like things that you're doing. I, I hate using social media, generally speaking. But in this case, I, I think you should be using your social media. You should have a public social media of just what you're doing in esports. Everything you're involved in, every event you attend, you should be posting that on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a key platform. I love that you brought up LinkedIn because that is going to be a big one uh, here for esports and just business in general. Uh, posting everything, every event you've gone through, the books that you're reading, the things that you've learned, the events that you've attended. If you put that on your LinkedIn for people that are going to come and look at your profile, you're set in order to, once they're in that vetting process, really be attracted because they want people immersed in the industry because that's what the, your competitors are doing. They're immersed and you need to be immersed to keep up with how fast it's changing. But in, when you're doing that as well, what's going to happen, like you mentioned, and I also mentioned this in the book as well, is the fact that once you do this and get into the habit just to build out this portfolio, employers and people are, will see this. And when you reach out and network, they will see this. Um, if you connect with people that are looking to hire and you're just posting about this information and you're mentioning that you know, you're know you looking to get into esports and you're super involved in the grassroots side, it's going to be something that stands out and it's going to give you more and more opportunities to land that dream job that you're looking for. Wow, you've actually just sold me on actually using my LinkedIn more because it's one of the things that I've been struggling with as well. I'm, you know, 23. I'm, a, I'm definitely in the Gen Z category, and uh, there's not a lot of people in my age range that are actually using uh, LinkedIn as a social media platform. A lot of people just use it as like a secondary resume, just list all of the things that I've done on the timeline there, all the work experience, and then done, be done with it. Maybe like a couple posts from my employer, but. Um, yeah, I think that you've just sold me on actually updating my LinkedIn and, and making more posts like that. So what are, what are some other like really good starter things to do, uh, you know, like that? I guess, I guess that's not necessarily a starter thing, but what are some more mid tier things to get done on the to-do list for this book? Yeah, a hundred percent. So we, like in early, in an earlier chapter after, or nearing the start of section two, there's a chapter called the optimal leveling up strategy where we go through, uh, where the reader is instructed to go through an exercise where he scans uh, a number of different job postings to understand what they're doing or what they need to do to build up the skill level. And also reach out to some people that try to understand what they're actively involved in, what kind of projects are they expected to do and really get involved in terms of building those out on the grassroots side. And you essentially want to have this checklist. I, I call it a missions list where you have to accomplish these things, both on the hard skill side and the soft skills. Soft skills are so important. About 77% of hiring managers value soft skills as much as hard skills, 16% value it more. Um, and the fact that you're on entry level work, and this is esports, one of the fastest growing industries where change is inevitable. It is, your soft skills are so, so important. And also, um, as I mentioned earlier, I, in a chapter I, I prescribed specifically for people to really get involved, understand the resources they should be consuming, but I also give them a list of networking events, uh, different opportunities that they should be involved in because a big, big thing that you can do to situate yourself well is um, to network. Play, playing as a summoner is essentially the class that really gets you the, uh, the job, which is summoners are networking. It's going to these networking events, engaging with people, letting them know that you're a younger individual looking to get into the business um, actually reach out, provide value to these individuals. That's a key, key part that I actually prescribe in each element. So when you're at university and college, you want to actually provide value to your classmates. Not, not to say that that wouldn't necessarily get you a job or not to say that it's going to necessarily even benefit you. It's definitely a long-term investment because those relationships will go a long way, especially once they start you know, situating themselves, not only in esports, but in all other industries that could be sponsors, strategic partners, possible investors. Um, but also you do the same thing when you're working at these grassroots organizations is providing value, helping people out, making their days, providing them resources. And then you transition that into esports because what, how you do one thing is how you really do everything. And that's why I think in like, when it comes back to social media, the reason why um, your grammar and spelling is one of the biggest sticklers, it, I believe it was the biggest stickler to um, 
people that are looking to hire you when they're scanning your social media is because if you're making mistakes when you're selling typical stuff on social media, what do you, what do they expect you to do when you're actually making important reports or have important things to deal with? So making sure you build out those habits and routines is a large part of what we kind of do to prepare you to actually get a job. You know, so for a last question, which is for kind of a compound question, okay, I want to ask you two things, okay? One of them is um, with the pandemic, um, are, do you believe that the jobs are more remote now or are they still in person? And then my secondary question to this is, what do you think the future of the job market is? So basically the pandemic and the future. Yeah, those are, those are great questions. In, in terms of your first question for jobs being more, more um, remote, obviously currently with the situation, there's a lot more jobs remotely than they were previously. And it, it's an interesting question to fully understand if they're going to continue that way. Um, a lot of people believe so, especially with just how technology is evolving and people are starting to notice that people can do their jobs at home just as productively um, as they could in person. But there's also a lot of downsides that companies are noticing in terms of culture, um, because culture is massive. There's a, there's a lot of studies showing that your business culture actually affects your bottom line significantly. Um, so that is one key issue, you know, meetings and human interactions, like those different elements. And also there's a lot of old school within esports or sorry, in business in general. But I don't think there'll be too much of a massive transition into remote. I definitely think it's going to increase. And I think within like even within esports specifically, like I, I have uh, I worked in an organization where they were struggling to do some live streaming um, Stuff because now they had to build a new infrastructure, an entire new framework online, which traditionally was in person. And it was like extremely complicated, extremely butchered. The, like the cost is way more than if it was just in person. And so like as much as I'd love for everything to be remote all the time, because that's how I personally love working is just home alone. Um, I don't think that's always going to be the case. And could you, could you reiterate your second question? It's just slipped my mind here. Kind of running out of time, but why don't we just let you have the last word and tell us how people can buy your book when it's available and how they can reach you? Yeah, 100%. So if you're interested in the book, it will be launched November 3rd. Uh, until then, if you want to be notified, go to esportshow.com slash book, and that's going to uh, lead you to a landing page where you can join the eSport How Discord server. Just join that server. You'll be notified on the day of. Otherwise, go to that link and you'll find an Amazon link where you'll be able to purchase the book. Um, at launch, it's going to be as cheap as I can possibly make it. The Kindle is always going to be 99 cents because I know students are a bit broke and they need, you know, that, they don't have that much money. So I want to provide that opportunity for people that want to buy it. Otherwise, it's going to be on Amazon, hardcover, softcover, and Kindle. Fantastic. Well, Uzair, good luck on your book. And uh, you provided such interesting and helpful information. And thank you, Artie. Appreciate you being here to co-host. Thank you for having me. And yeah, Uzair, thank you so much. That was very, very helpful and insightful, especially, you know, I, I definitely benefited a lot from this talk and I cannot wait to read your book. So thank you so much. Happy to be here. All right. Anyway, thank you to our viewers for joining us today. Next week, I'll be talking with Ari Fox, the CEO of Gamacon and producer of the Casino Esports Conference. See you then.